Jeff Fuller with you. Trust you guys are doing well. You can certainly follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and the Facebook group, J Fuller Interviews. I'm uh, really excited to have Thomas John Sorrentine join the program. TJ, how are you? I'm great. How you doing, Jeff? Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So uh, I'm a big basketball junkie, and this shot is from you from that infamous game against Syracuse. Uh, Do you get bored or annoyed that people refer to your career as this one shot? No, how could you? You know, how could you? Um, I I like to remind people I did have a few more buckets and a few more assists than I did in that game, but um, it's good to be known for something rather than nothing at all. So that's the way I look at it. For sure. Hey, if you could backtrack a little bit, you went to a uh, prep school in Rhode Island. Did you go to high school first or did you stay at Pawtucket that uh, that entire high school career? Yeah, so I actually played for my dad in high school. So um, we uh, I played for him for four years and um, was fortunate enough uh, then to go on to Vermont. Yeah. So I was I was I stayed at the same high school for four years. What was that recruiting process like for you? Uh, And what did you know about Vermont when you finally chose UVM? Yeah, I knew nothing about it. Um, I didn't even know they were Division One, to be honest. Um, Hmm. uh, You know, I was at a tournament in Providence, Rhode Island. On it was a Sunday. I went home. Uh, I had a good game, and uh, one of the assistants, Curtis Wilson, at the time, uh, who's now at Boston University, he uh, slipped me his card and said, "Hey, call this, call the office on Monday." So I went home and. I said, hey, dad, this guy from Vermont um, said, call him on Monday. You know, I told him I'd call him at, at noon. Um, can we use your office? He says, yeah, yeah, definitely. So cause my dad was the athletic director as well. So I uh, went, went to his office at noon and had a conversation with uh, Coach Brennan and uh, Jesse Agle. And then like two days later, uh, they, were, they drove down and, and came and visited uh, myself and my father at the high wow. school. Um, so it, it happened pretty quick. Um, the big selling point for me was – uh, they recruited one point guard every four years, and it, my year was up to recruit a point guard. So basically, they were saying they're going to give me the ball as a freshman and uh, go go have at it. So that's what I like to hear. Now, being a 5'11 point guard, did you ever try to stretch yourself to six feet, or were you one of those guys that was actually taller, but you put yourself smaller on the roster? Well, it's funny. Uh, I always had tried to stretch myself until I got to college, and I heard Eddie Benton had won the uh, – Naismith Award for, or nominated. I don't know if he won it, but he was up for it. And uh, you know, best player under under six Thank feet. You. And uh, so I wanted to win that award <laughs> selfishly. Um, so I, I always kept myself at five eleven. Now, TJ, uh, you are certainly known for your shooting, but you could get to the hole as well. There's a picture behind. I think that's a game against Syracuse. What was it about basketball that just drew you in? And how old were you when you first started? Yeah, you know what? I actually came up playing baseball. Uh, baseball was my first love. Uh, my, you know, I just the area I was from was very, very good, and, and had good youth baseball. Uh, my father, he coached three sports in high school. He coached basketball, baseball, and football. So I was exposed to all different uh, sports, and I never really got serious about basketball till I was probably around thirteen. Um, and then I just kind of fell in love. Baseball became a little too slow for me. Hmm. Um, I liked to pitch, but, you know, playing in the field and batting at once every nine guys was a little too slow for me. So um, I really fell in love with basketball. And um, then I started to play AAU and travel a little bit and um, just started to dedicate all my time. I still play baseball all the way through high school. I think that was good for me just to relieve me of, uh, you know, just focusing solely on one sport. I think kids nowadays, they get a little bit – too locked in too early. I think diversity is good. Um, and I think it definitely helped me uh, from a mindset standpoint to continue to play baseball. Now, how refreshing was it to have a different coach than your dad coaching you in baseball? Well, no, he coached me in baseball too. Ah. Yeah. So it was tough. I, I always tell, uh, tell people, uh, me and my dad are, are, are so close right now. Um, uh, but when, when I was in high school, those four years, I, I hated him. Um, he pushed me, uh, he was not one of those fathers that, you know, took it easy on you. He, he made, he pushed me harder than everybody else. And and obviously I thank him for that today. I mean, that's why I became who I was, uh, especially at the college level, but he, um, man, he was tough. And I remember a couple nights going over to my mom and saying, I'm transferring, I'm out. 
You know, there's no, there's no way. I mean, I drove to school with him every day. And so if I had a bad game, he was a phys ed teacher. So if I had a bad game, I'm driving in the car with him. I'm driving home with him. You know, I just, we had some tough nights there and, uh, but it, it made me who I was for sure. That's, I've heard it said that if your son or daughter is on the basketball or on the team that you coach, you want them either the best player or the worst player. Cause if they're somewhere in the middle, it makes it difficult. Were you always one of the better players on the team? Um, I think I worked my way to that point. I didn't play, I didn't play uh, varsity my freshman year. Um, I played JV and then I had to work my way to the varsity and um, I wasn't the best guy on the team my sophomore and my junior year. Uh, I wasn't the best guy till I was a senior. Uh, we had some good players on our team and we were fortunate to win a couple state titles, but uh, yeah, I wasn't always the best. I just thrived to be the best. That was my biggest thing. I, I, I just wanted to outwork everybody. Uh, I didn't want anybody to say uh, they outworked me. And that was one thing my dad did. And he, my dad never, as much as he coached me, he never was the type of guy who said, hey, you need to, did you take your 500 shots today? Did you, did you get your 1,000 dribbles in? It was, uh, you know, hey, did you work out today? Yep. And if I if I did, he'd say, all right, good. If I said no, he'd say, well, someone probably, someone probably did. You know, mm-hmm. I, never wanted, I never wanted to let him down. And, um, you know, it was just one of those things. Now, have you been watching the Last Dance documentary? Absolutely. Yeah, phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, just the way they put it together, I thought it was really cool. Now, Jordan definitely pushed players. Uh, what are your thoughts on his leadership? And let me back up one second. I always thought you were the alpha male on that UVM team. And Taylor, even though he was bigger and he could score, um, you were the voice. Uh, how important is it to be the voice and know um who is the alpha in those roles yeah it's funny um you know i wasn't the funnest guy to play with um you know i think a lot of guys will who played with me they loved me off the court we had great times off off the court but on the court i was i was tough i'm not gonna say i was michael jordan um but from a mindset and mindset and how i pushed my teammates uh it wasn't always pretty um you know one of my best friends today david hayne He'll tell you he he you know he took the brunt of uh, of what I was giving out. Um, he was a year behind me to start, and when he was a freshman, I used to ride him. I was a sophomore, and I had come in, come into my own and was really good uh, that year. And um, I used to ride. You know, if I missed a shot and he passed me the ball, I used to yell at him for throwing a bad pass. You know, like just nonstop. I, but he ended up, you know, he ended up being a great player for us. And, I just, you know, I, my my methods probably could have been a little better, but I was just so competitive, and um, I just wanted to bring my teammates to to my level in a sense. Um, but part of the way I did that was just live in the gym, so no one could ever question my my what I'm giving to the game. Um, and so, yeah, that was kind of that was kind of how I was. Hey, so in the NBA, uh, especially with the last dance, they were talking about what a physical game it was and how it's getting a little bit easier now to uh, move on the floor. When you played for UVM, the America East, how physical was that? And was that a big adjustment for you coming from high school? Yeah, big adjustment. Uh, my freshman year was a was a big adjustment for me, even just practice. I remember practice. The first week of practice was really hard. and you know, I was expected to come in and start and play right away. And, I, you know, was times I was questioning myself and guys were older and more physical. And, um, but, you know, you get used to it and you, you figure it out. You know, that's part of uh, that's part of the transition from, you know, high school to college, college to the pros. Um, you you got to, you know, you're good enough to be there and you, you can never forget that. So you, you always have to, uh, you know, just look in your look inside yourself and uh, keep pushing. And then looking at this shot against Syracuse from the parking lot, um, you guys had games leading up to this that people kind of forget about as far as the first couple of years before this win against Syracuse. Can you just talk about how that prepared you? I forget which year you guys played UConn, but Mecca Okafor, that guy's a beast. Um, how were you guys prepared uh, for that game against Syracuse? Yeah, we were prepared. Um, we had you know, even that year. Yeah, we played UConn the year before in the NCAA tournament, and they won the national championship. Um, and then our first game of the year, we played Kansas that year, yeah. and they were number one in the country. And we ended up playing North Carolina right before Christmas, and they were number one in the country. They ended up winning the national title that year. So we had played two of the best teams in the country 
uh, that year. So we were we were confident, and um, I think I've said this before. A lot of people felt like it was a bad draw for us uh, getting Syracuse. They had just won the Big East tournament, um, but you know, for me, it was like uh, you know two three zone. I get to fire some threes. That's that's all good for me. And I love the fact that uh, I believe you said it or it was stated about you that you were fired up when you were called the poor man's Jerry McNamara. Um, some of these guys that play Division One, there's not a lot of difference except for the name is the name recognition on the front of the jersey. Um, how fired up were you just to go out and say, hey, it's another game. I'm going to show my skills. But was there that edge just to say you're a poor man's nobody? Uh, yeah, 100%. Um, uh, whenever you're playing against one of the best guards uh, in the entire NCA, you know, which Jerry was, he had won a national championship. And uh, you're always measuring yourself against those guys. And sometimes, you know, you don't get the recognition or the love, quote unquote, that you feel like you, you should. And when people disrespect you and, you know, make comments like that, it may not be as harmful or that may not be the point. Um, but obviously, you know, like Jordan, you always, you, you know, I was always looking for things to, to motivate me. And that was, that was something I used, you know, and it was, uh, you know, um, I'm thankful that the guy asked that question because it gave me a little more motivation for sure. Hey, so, uh, coach Tommy Brennan, he's definitely a fan favorite. Um, what was he like during the recruiting process, but also on the sidelines for your four years? Uh, how involved was he with X's and O's uh, versus off the court, where I know everybody that's played for him loves him? Yeah. Um, yeah, Coach, he just, uh, you know, he followed me around that summer, uh, him and Jesse Agel, and uh, everywhere I played uh, leading up to uh, committing to Vermont, they were in the building. Um, and that just showed me ultimate amount, amount of love and that I was their guy. And uh, that made me choose Vermont. And then, you know, when I got to Vermont, um, you know, and played for Coach Brennan, he, he was, he, I always tell people, he was the best at um, getting you ready to play. Um, mm -hmm. he, 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 he would walk in that locker room and he, every time he would hit, it, hit a home run um, with what he said before we left that locker room. And, and that, to me, to this day, is a, is a unique skill and you know, something hopefully um, I can take from him. Just, just the way he, he presented his thoughts um, really resonated with, with our team and every year I was there. And then in the game, he, just, he, he had a great knack for There was times where I would be struggling um, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't take me out. You know, and I'd be looking to come out um, and he'd play through it, play through it. And then there'd be times when I, I had it going and he'd take me out and I'd be like, whoa, what are you doing? And uh, he'd be like, hey, just get a quick rest, quick rest. I didn't understand it at the time, um, but he was oh, he was unbelievable the way he, he he got us ready to play. And then in game, just the way he substituted and kind of mastermind the lineups. Um, yeah, because he wasn't I mean, he'll tell you this. He wasn't he wasn't a guy that's going to be X and O and on the board and you know, doing all types of different plays. We were very simplified. And um, I think that helped us perform because we were so simple. And, uh, you know, he did a great job at managing us. Now, there's something about Coach Brennan. When he says, my boy, you think he's uh, saying that directly to you. Now, were you the original my boy from Coach Brennan? What is it about him that makes you just feel special whenever he talks to you? Yeah, I don't think I was the original. Um, I I'm glad to be a part of that. I actually... Uh, I was up in Vermont in, um, uh, this past weekend, and I went and saw him at a social distance, uh, you know, six feet. Uh, we sat on this porch and just talked. And anytime I get a chance to see him, uh, I always make it a point to try to get, get over to see him. And uh, I'm definitely his boy, but I don't think I was the original my boy. But he definitely, he definitely makes you feel so stressful. And uh, he goes out of his way to, to, to work on those relationships and build relationships with people tries never to forget a face and always tries to make you feel special. And that's, that's a unique gift that he has. Oh, definitely. Hey, could you just talk about the fan support that you guys help create in that culture that continues on now um, at Patrick is just remarkable. Uh, what was that like for you when you first entered into uh, college, but then you just saw the uh, fans just grow over time and just sell out the gyms, especially the last couple of years you played. Yeah, we weren't very good my freshman year. Um, we, I think we won 10 games um, and, and we struggled. And um, I used to go to the women's games and watch them and the place was packed. Um, so I knew it could happen. Um, and I knew we just had to win. Um, uh, 
and that was after my freshman year. I think we had a great group of guys coming back and we, we bunch of us stayed that summer and kind of just dedicated ourselves to becoming a closer unit. And, um, you know, we knew something special could happen. Um, again, that my sophomore year, we lost in the semifinals. Um, and I think that ultimately helped us uh, as a group get over that hump. You, I'm a firm believer and you got to, you got to go through some failure and hard times to get to the top. And um, that was definitely hard for us, you know, especially for those uh, seniors uh, who graduated, uh, Trevor Gaines being, being one of them. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it was uh, something to be said for sure. And now, TJ, if you would, talk to me about your first impressions of Taylor Coppenrath. He says that uh, he kind of gets the short end of the stick when people said that he uh, played at the University of Vermont, but he even admits even more so he went to high school in Vermont. At first sight, did you think, who is this tall, lanky kid from Vermont? What's he doing on the team? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you hit it right on the head. I, you know, he was probably 190 pounds soaking wet. Um you know, about six, seven at that time, maybe six, eight. Hmm. Um, and he just, you know, didn't look like much. And I'm sure he said the same thing about me. I know he said the same thing about me. It, it just that I talk, talk a little funny. Um, but he, uh, you know, that freshman year when he redshirted, he was in practice, just dominating. He was playing like unbelievable shooting threes and just kind of coming into his own. And I, I know the coaches thought about taking him off the red shirt. Um, thankfully they didn't. Um, but he was playing that well. Um, so I knew once I got on the court with him that he could play and then he grew a little bit and got stronger. His shoulders were so wide. You just, you couldn't move him. He was so strong. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was a progression, um, especially from the first time that I, that I did meet him and see him. He told me a funny story once he was home from playing overseas, uh, and I said, what move are you working on? And he said, another up fake. I was like, what? He's like, I just up fake till somebody jumped. And then I just jump into him and I get the and one. Uh, talk to me about your teammates that you played with at UVM. How special of a group do you continue to be? Yeah, I think one of the most special groups you could ever have. Um, we had a, I had a Zoom um, a Zoom conference call. I set it up. Uh, couple weeks back with with a bunch of guys and um all those guys were on that team were on one and then a couple of the older guys were on another and um you know that's that's one positive of this uh this quarantine and um you know this this tough time we're going through is the ability to connect with uh old teammates i mean we we, we pretty much stay in contact pretty regularly uh the group that that old five group um you know we were about five seniors myself david hayne jermaine Mopa, um, Taylor, and then Alex Jensen. Um, so we, we've got a bond that I think will never be broken. And, um, you know, it's good to always relive different different times in your past. And, and uh, just every time we talk, something new comes up. So that's, that's, a, that's a neat thing about it. Now, for you, uh, not only being in the University of Vermont Hall of Fame, but the New England Hall of Fame, could you just talk about how special that night was to uh, go into the Hall of Fame with Taylor and just being celebrated um, uh, in Burlington? Yeah, I mean, man, super special for my family, I think, for the most part. Um, you know, at this point, uh, you know, get, getting older and, um, you know, coaching and, having a family. I think it's great just to have them with me now and just see the pride and joy that my family has when four nights like that. And uh, it's because uh, you really, you know, when you're playing, you don't, you're not really with them. You're kind of with your team yeah. um, and moments like this, you're with your family. Um, and I think for me, that is, it's, that's the ultimate, you know, uh, I'm, I'm super close with my family and uh, it's, uh, it's great to be able to relive those memories with them. Uh, this time. Hey, a few more questions, then we'll get you out. Thanks so much, TJ, for making yeah, the for sure. time. Um, I just love the stories and reliving. I mean, I'm a few years older. I actually was the same class as Eddie Benton. And so being around, I didn't go to UVM, but being around and watching basketball just develop uh, in Vermont, it's been so much fun. Uh, seeing Anthony Lamb, um, unfortunately, his season did not end how anybody wanted but just knowing that you've played a part in building that winning culture at Vermont, when you think of Anthony Lamb or other recruits coming into Vermont, does that give you a sense of pride that you've uh, had a hand in building this foundation? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, I love to see the program continue to thrive. It's it's awesome. I, I'm very close with their staff. Obviously, I played with two of those guys, Kyle Zaplicki and uh, Ryan Schneider. were on that 05 team. And, um, you know, Coach Becker, he he's – He's been a good friend and, uh, you know, I appreciate everything he does for me and, you know, keeping me involved in the program and, and getting things like the, the retirement, uh, you know, having a big hand in that. Um, so, you know, they, they've been great to me and I love to see see guys, you know, perform at the highest level. Um, you know, they've had some great players uh, come through after me um, and it's great to see. And hopefully, you know, I'll be getting getting back to going to their Hall of Fames. You know, uh, you know Mike Tremoli's, the Marcus Blakely's probably coming up pretty soon. And it'll be fun for me to get back to, you know, celebrate those guys. And obviously, Anthony Lamb is a, is a great talent. Um, I wish we got to see what he could have done in the NCAA tournament. Um, but it is what it is. He's going to have a success, successful pro career and uh, we'll be we'll be rooting for him in cat country for sure. So uh, with Mike, was he the point guard recruited after you? Yeah, Mike was. Yeah, he, he, we actually uh, – so Tromboli was uh, – he came on his official visit um, when I was a senior, and I actually hosted him. Um, so, yeah. He, was, he, uh, was he apprehensive, or did you – were you like the defining moment where you just said you want to play here as a four-year uh, point guard? It's a great place. What was that conversation like? Yeah, I mean – I again it was kind of one of those things we were you know i wanted the guy after me to be great and i thought mike yeah. was really good i i know our coaches we had a we had uh camp uh and he actually came he was on his visit during camp so i was up there it was like an unofficial visit in the summer and um we played pickup basketball and um the coaches aren't allowed to watch but um hit one of the uh it got back to the coaches that um I kind of gave it to him a little bit and they were, they weren't happy with me because <laughs> they were trying to get him to, to, to come to Vermont. Um, but, uh, you know, Mike being a competitor, that's, that's yeah. what you want. You want guys, um, that, you know, want to, want to be great. And, uh, Mike was one of those guys and I knew he was going to have a great career. And uh, we were fortunate that he did commit. Um, and obviously he did have a great career. Mike's a good guy. Uh, hey, so the only gutcha question of the interview, TJ Sorrentine, uh, just make some time. Thanks again. Did you recruit Anthony Lamb? Did you know anything about him when he was coming out? Yeah, we 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 found out about him a little later. Um, Cornell was recruiting him in our league. He's obviously from upstate New York. And um, so we saw him play with the City Rocks. Um a, a few times actually in Springfield, Massachusetts. And, um, you know, you saw right away. He was, he was, he was a talent, just a little undersized, you know, six, five, yeah. six, six, um, for the higher levels, but he, again, whoever he played against, he got, he got a bucket and, um, could do whatever he wanted. And I think that a lot of times, you know, what I've learned is, you know, those are the best guys at our level, you know, and they can, they, they play with a chip on their shoulder and they're trying to prove everybody, everybody wrong that, that didn't recruit him. And that's the way I played. And so whenever I see guys like that, uh, it's, it's, it's a joy for me to watch. And he was definitely one of those guys. And, uh, you know, he proved he could play with anybody in the country. Yeah. There's something about Vermont that, uh, even going back to Kevin Roberson, God rest his soul, then Marcus, mm -hmm. uh, Blakely, then, uh, Anthony, they're all kind of that undersized, but for where they play, they actually do a phenomenal job. But TJ, could you just talk to us about, uh, you mentioned a few times how you didn't really know what Coach Brennan was doing when he subbed you out, when you felt like you were go had it going, or he left you in when you wanted a break. How have you made that transition to uh, having that personality or that relationship with your players, but also really trying to get them to fulfill the game plan you and your staff put together? Yeah, I think it's a constant battle. I think you have to uh, take, remove yourself. And, and me being such a competitor as a player, I think that's one thing I've learned, uh, that everyone's not like myself. Um, and, and I think that's what's made me become a, a much better coach and, and someone that our guys look to and just having a calming presence. I think the calmer you are, like I was a, I was a, a upbeat and just – full of energy as a player. Um, and I think that's the way you have to be as a player, but as a coach, I think you have to be a little bit of a calming presence and, and influence, especially in my role, uh, just, just making sure that our guys, uh, keep their head on straight and, and don't get out of, out of themselves, which, which can happen with, uh, with people in the stands, high emotions, uh, adrenaline. Um, and I, I think that's, that's the beauty of, 
becoming a coach after playing is seeing both sides of it. Um, and that's, you know, coach was, he was the best. He was the best at that. You know, coach Brennan, he, man, he was, he was phenomenal. He always pushed the right buttons uh, uh, for sure. Now, I believe it was Magic Johnson when he was coaching the Lakers, he would get so frustrated because he could see the game and what he would be able to do, some of his players were not able to do. When you see some of the players that you coach or you recruit and they seemingly do not put in the time or the work that you did, how frustrating is that for you? But do you still believe there is hope that one day they'll figure it out? Yeah, I think that's the job. That's my job, just to teach them how to get to that point. Um, and I always say, assume they know nothing, you know, assume they know nothing. They don't know how to, how to work out. They don't know what it takes. Um, and then it, it, you teach them and you show them and each guy is taught differently. Um, you got to hit different buttons for, for every guy, you know, um, you can't try to do the same thing with every guy. Cause that does not work. Um, and I, and that, that's what I love about coaching is just finding what, buttons to push with each guy and it, it, it's a it, it just keeps me going it gives me gives me a ton of life and just trying to figure that out um it's it's fun every day and, and i love to be able to work with guys and teach them what i know and, and also me get to know learn and, and grow every day you know it's a it's the best profession to me coaching and helping these 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 kids become men it's uh it's it's a joy every day yeah, I imagine. Coach, the last question I have for you, TJ Sorrentine, UVM standout Hall of Famer, just joining us. And that's simply this COVID-19 quarantine, this pandemic. Uh, some schools, athletic uh, departments are saying that there may not, probably will not be fall sports. Uh, that begs the question, what does that mean for basketball that does uh, literally start in the fall and then go certainly into the winter. Uh, what say you at Brown? What's been the conversation? And just for you personally, how much do you feel we need sports and organized sports just to uh, help us get through what's currently taking place? Yeah, I think there's just an ongoing conversation. Um, I think what we've heard is just the more information that comes out every day, they kind of take it, process it, and then apply it to different things they're thinking about. Um, nothing concrete you know i think everybody's optimistic um that we will be back in the fall i know our president is has been uh quoted in the new york times as saying that you know education should be a priority um getting these kids back to school that they you know they need to be in school and you know it's uh it's just hard i think the safety is is the biggest thing i think until everybody can be safe and comfortable you see a lot of these states opening up and um, you just hold your breath, you know, you hope it works out. And, um, but obviously sports is a huge part of our society and, you know, just the Michael Jordan last dance. I mean, you saw how much people love that and love watching that every Sunday night and, you know, look forward to that. It's, uh, you know, sports are, are very unique. They bring people together and God willing, if we can, um, get this, get this thing under control, we can get sports back. I know football is, football is probably going to show the way. and Whatever they do, I think will have an effect on, on basketball um, because obviously football is first and they, they, they start, you know, bigger schools start in August, you know, with practice. So are those kids going to come back? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I wish I had an answer for you, Jeff, and uh, hopefully we will be back as everybody loves hoops and me, me more than anybody, but um Obviously, safety is uh, first and foremost. Uh, definitely. Thomas, John, Sorrentine, staying or waking up early, making some time for us. Thanks again for doing that. And uh, we'll get together down the road. So uh, thanks again for being here. Yeah, Jeff, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. And again, you can uh, find more great interviews, Jay Fuller interviews on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll talk to you again soon. And uh, TJ, he's a man. UVM, they're so much fun to watch. And just going back to that group of guys, what a class act. They really pushed and drove to uh, build that foundation. Lots of fun. We'll talk to you guys soon. All right, we're out.